justice. Tonight I ordered a targeted military strike. The military might of the United States is back. After eight years of Obama broken red lines and weakness, we've seen Syria turned into a war zone. But tonight, Syria, Russia, and the world are put on notice there's a new sheriff in the White House. It's the right thing to do. I would just say this about President Trump. I'm proud of him. Tonight, the president's main man on terrorism, Sebastian Gorka, is here live. Plus, I'll take on Senator Rand Paul. He says President Trump should have waited for congressional authorization before going after Assad. So the appropriate way is to ask our permission. But, so I, uh, but, Senator, if we don't get involved, what does he do? Just chemically gas every baby in the place? America's getting tough again. America's getting great again. And justice starts now. Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Jeanine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. The world reacting to President Trump's military strike against Syria this week, and now it's time for the GOP and the country to unite behind our commander-in-chief. I'll be speaking in a moment with counselor to the president, Kellyanne Conway, who's here in New York with me live, plus his deputy assistant, Sebastian Gorka, also standing by to talk about the strike and what's next for the United States and the region. Later, I'll be joined by Corey Lewandowski, Senator Rand Paul, and Colonel David Hunt. But first, my opening statement. When President Donald Trump ordered a targeted strike on that military base in Syria, he demonstrated swift, certain, and decisive leadership, absent for so long in America. His clarity, determination, and compassion for the most weak among us, without the accustomed indifference, whimpering, dithering, vacillating, moral equivalency of the other guy, reflects not only his courage, strength, and honor, but finally, the resurgence and the reawakening of America the Great. This is what we voted for. And now it's time for the Republicans in Congress to learn from our commander in chief, to put on their big boy pants and start learning how to fight like our leader. You're in Congress to get things done, not fight publicly over things like health care bills that should have been resolved before you trumpeted the hidden treasure you apparently never had. The president needs a team behind him, one that doesn't step aside every time a Democrat complains or accuses you of something. Can't you see you're being played in their united front against President Trump? Their ability to create partisan sideshows amounting to nothing more than distractions are worthy of Houdini. It was Nancy Pelosi who allowed left-wing outside activist groups to make congressional ethics complaints. All this craziness about Trump-Russian collusion is debunked by Obama National Intelligence Director Clapper, former acting CIA Director Mike Morrell and Democratic House Intelligence Chair Adam Schiff. Yet take a look. Michael Flynn, National Security Advisor, gone. Because among other things, his name unmasked improperly, if not illegally, by Susan Rice. Attorney General Jeff Sessions, a man of the highest honor and integrity, who sat across a table from a Russian just like Nancy Pelosi did, has recused himself from overseeing an FBI inquiry into Russian efforts. And now, Congressman Devin Nunes recuses himself from leading the House investigation because of complaints by left-wing activists. In spite of the fact that there is by all accounts absolutely no evidence of any collusion, the Democratic spiteful united front against the president simply complain and Nunes wimps out. What is wrong with the Republicans? Even FBI Director Jim Comey reportedly not cooperating with anyone, now he's on his own. Query. Hillary Clinton and her husband were cashing in on the sale of U.S. uranium to Russia, money 
cash was actually crossing hands. Where was the Republican outrage, the hearings, the demand for recusals, the ethics investigations? Susan Rice lied about Benghazi, Bo Bergdahl, knowing nothing about the unmasking of Michael Flynn, and days later admitting she did unmask, but it wasn't for political purposes. In 2014, she says all chemical weapons stockpiled in Syria removed. Yes, not. And if you need more, Rice was director of African Affairs during the genocide of 800,000 in Rwanda, and she objected to the word genocide because of the effect it might have on the Democratic midterm elections. The woman is a liar. These are liars with no shame, no remorse, no accountability, and no recusals. You Republicans have allowed it, and now you're buckling to these partisan sideshows, taking away from our president the support that he needs to get the job done. He's shown you how to do it. So now strap in, buck up, and start fighting like your leader. And that's my open. Tell me what you think on my Facebook page or Twitter, hashtag Judge Janine. And with me now is counselor to the president, Kellyanne Conway. Kellyanne, I am, first of all, let me say that I think America cheered on Thursday night as we watched for the first time in eight years. It was like the America that we grew up with was back. A president in charge, never a politician, but a man who understood right and wrong and good and evil and took action, decisive. He was, and he was resolute, unequivocal, strong, but also compassionate. If you listen to his words, it was a combination of how the international community has failed to try to correct the actions or change the behavior of Assad in Syria. And at the same time, he was very clear in how moved he was by the pictures of innocent children writhing and literally choking for their lives. Uh, that's a commander-in-chief that the whole world saw. I think it sends more than a message. It was actual action. And I have to push back on your opening in this way. I actually think it was a remarkable week for our Republican President Donald Trump. For him it was. In Washington in this way. What Leader McConnell was able to do that we now have for the first time since 2006 in 11 years, we have a Republican presidential nominee confirmed to the United States Supreme Court is simply remarkable. It will impact generations. Mm -hmm. And Leader McConnell kept that seat open, and he shepherded uh, Judge, Judge Gorsuch through, that, that he's now United States Supreme Court Justice Gorsuch, in a way that I think brought his conference together, but also exposed the Democrats as being this party of obstructionists and resistors. And I want to say we want their help. We're yet to get this big influx of Democrats saying, hey, we want to help with health care reform. But we this help is what I'm saying reform. about We're the president. To... The president has gotten people like Schumer to say what he has done in Syria was the right thing. The yes, Democrats Pelosi. and Pelosi all. And so what I'm saying now is the Republicans in Congress have to take you know, a script or a page from the president and start delivering as well as opposed to you know, this caucus and this Tuesday group and, you know, and, and you know, just delivering the way he did. Well, let's take health care for a moment. So in the two weeks since... Uh, the, the first bill was pulled. You've seen a lot of progress, conversation, continuing to try to move forward with what is a very ideologically diverse caucus. You've got people who sit in, you've got Republican members who sit in districts that are, you know, plus 8 or 10 Democratic. You've got Republicans who sit in districts that are plus 25, 30 Republican. Mm -hmm. But they're all Republicans. And this country put a Republican House and a Senate and a Republican president in for the first time in years, Janine, because they want things to be done. They don't want divided government. They want progress. But progress takes time. I just talked tonight to a congressman whose amendment, along with another congressman, is now part of the bill. That's progress. That amendment actually actually will bring premiums down, which is something that's been very important to folks, while allowing after a three years of a federal program for states to opt in or opt out. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't want to get too technical. I'm just yeah. saying it's yeah. a great example of the progress that's been made. But, but you, a while. if you look at the pictures that we showed during the open, you know, this one recused himself, that one recused himself, and this one is gone. And this is, this is all about the Democrats pushing back. But when we had the opportunity, when they were in the lead, 
politically to push back on people like Susan Rice. And I, I, I'll ask my next guest about the Iran uh, uh, deal and whether or not we can count on that one. But why didn't we do that to them? They are expert at pushing us and pushing us and claiming the moral high ground. Guess who pushed back? The people. The yes, people took back true. their party. The how people true. took back. They were told for years, who's electable? Electability, you can't win. He can't win. Donald Trump can't win. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump pushed back. He came in and he disrupted the system in a way that people aren't used to. And it's already paying dividends. Look at the confidence number. Look at the job creation. Look at the regulatory reform that's already underway. People feel good about spending their money. This is progress. Uh, having the Supreme Court justice, I think it ended up being a footnote yesterday because of the strength, the strength and leadership in the actions in Syria and other things that happened this week, three bilateral meetings, also a big message sent to North Korea. Such a message sent. I mean, you know, the, the, the president is working 24-7. Yes, and he, but he's leading. He's leading here, and he's leading the members in the Senate and the House as well. He's uh, working the phones. He's meeting them in person on health care, but on other issues also. Tax reform is just starting to take hold. He's somebody who takes many different inputs and insights from different people, mm -hmm. so expect that to, to keep evolving. Uh, we feel like we're in a good place. I think it was a wonderful week for presidential leadership. It was. That it was for presidential leadership. Kelly and Conway, thanks so thanks much for, for being with me. us Thank tonight. You. And join Joining me now from our nation's capital, the Deputy Assistant to the President of the United States, Dr. Sebastian Gorka. Good evening, Doctor. How are you? Good evening, Judge. Very well. I'll bet you're feeling great tonight. It's been an amazing week, as Kellyanne and both of you have noted, and that was quite an opening statement, Judge. Well, you know what? All I want is for the president to have the support that he needs. And as you know, you know, I, I have a lot of strong feelings about people who lie and people who don't say the truth. And honestly, I'll start with the last question I was going to start with, and that is, do I have to worry now about the Iran deal? Does America have to worry about it, given, you know, this deal that they worked out with Russia? You want to talk about a bromance? Maybe Obama had a bromance with Putin uh, in Tehran when he worked out that deal in Syria for the elimination of the uh, chemical uh, uh, weapons they had over there. But, but and, and I think one more we need thing to... On that, one more thing on that, Judge. Yes. Just remember, who told us that Syria no longer had chemical weapons? It wasn't just the Russians. It was also Susan Rice. Exactly. Isn't that, Isn't that interesting? Yeah, well, it's not a surprise to me. Once a liar, always a liar. I used to tell my juries that all the time. But anyway, let's talk about the fact that I, I just love the visuals. You know, you've got the president. President. He's having dinner with uh, uh, the pr president of China, and you know it was like coffee, tea, a cruise <laughs> missile. I mean, it was like no one imagined that this was going on. But that's Donald Trump. The man can do a million things at once. The message loud to Assad, to Putin, to uh, Kim Jong Un. Well, you think he got the message? Oh, I know he got the message. I mean, think about it. We have, in just a few days, reasserted statescraft, statesmanship, in a way that has been lacking for almost a decade. Diplomacy, words, uh, treaties, they mean nothing if there's there isn't force to back it up. With just one strike, that message was sent to all those capitals and all those people. And isn't it interesting how quiet Tehran has been in the last couple of days? I think yes. that tells you a lot. It does tell us a lot. And, you know, is there truth in, 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 in that the deconfliction channels between the U.S. And, and Moscow were down? Uh, the... The administration in the Kremlin said they don't want to use it. Uh, there's always a little bit of showmanship, not even yes. brinkmanship, the mm -hmm. movement of that Russian vessel uh, as well. Yeah. But listen, they have to make some kind of noise, of but it's only noise, Judge. I, I, I agree. And, and you know, um, now the question is, when people say, what is the end game, I mean, is there an end game here? Oh, there is an end game. We're not going to tell anybody. But let me tell you one thing. I bumped into the vice president coming into the West Wing uh, right after the attack. And he said to me, he stopped and he said, what a night. What did you think of that? And I said, superb, Mr. Vice President. And he said one thing. He said, we've sent a message to the world. Nobody gets to use chemical we weapons yeah. against women and children. Do you think they heard the message? I had one reply to him. Yes, Mr. Vice President. Absolutely. The America is showing its leadership on the world stage. And, you know, the, the, uh, the issue of that uh, Trump 
Putin bromance hopefully is dead and gone at this point. Uh, but I think, you know, the, the last question is, when Nikki Haley at the U.N. warned that we would do more if needed, do you think the president will be going to Congress to ask for permission? Well, look, the, there are many things. The, the second article of the Constitution allows the president to do all kinds of military actions uh, as short of, of a full declaration of war. So, you know, that we, again, we're not going to give our playbook away. That's what the last administration did. Uh, we are going to do everything that is required legally, but the president has a very wide latitude to deal with these kinds of threats, mm -hmm. especially when they're in contravention of international law, like the use of chemical weapons. Well, you know, Doctor, just the, the uh, his acting is, is significant, given that Obama drew that line in the sand and 500,000 people dead, 5 million displaced. The president made it real. The president made that line real. Oh, he did indeed. Dr. Sebastian Gorka, thank you so much for being thank with us judge. tonight. And former Trump campaign manager Corey Lewandowski still on deck tonight. Plus... So when we go to war, that's the way it should be. The president should come to us and ask our permission. Senator Rand Paul visits justice to say President Trump was wrong to launch missiles into Syria without approval from Congress. I'll talk to him about that. Coming up. And what could be next in this critical region? I'm joined live by Fox News military analyst, my friend Colonel David Hunt. Don't miss it. Justice rolls on. Breaking tonight, a U.S. Navy carrier headed for a port of call in Australia has reversed course and is heading back to the waters off the Korean Peninsula after recent provocations from North Korea. With me now to talk about this and more is Colonel David Hunt, Fox News military analyst. All right, Colonel Hunt, that just coming in. Uh, you know anything about this? Yeah, there's, two, there's only two reasons. And by the way, aircraft carriers normally don't travel by themselves. Uh, they come in a, a, a group, a oh. lot of a lot of ships and marines. But the, there's only there's two reasons to do this: one, to send a signal to North Korea, or two, to get preparations for an attack. And that's the only reason you reposition aircraft carriers. I hope it's just the first, which is just to send a message to North Korea, because the latter is war. That's a very that that's a very tough one. But yeah, that's that that's a serious movement. The North Koreans know we're doing it. The Chinese know we're doing it. Um, so it's, it's certainly a signal. I hope that's all it is to, to give, tell North Korea a uh, pushback. Do we know that you know the name of this particular ship or vessel? No, I don't. I just know it was moving. It was moving. I, don't, I know the Bush is uh, in the Persian Gulf, and unfortunately, I'm just an army guy. I know the name. Know the names of all the aircraft carriers. But it's a significant movement when you move an aircraft carrier and reverse its course. All it's, right, it's my, uh, my producer is telling me in my ear, Colonel, that it's a USS uh, Vinson, Carl Vinson? Yeah, it's a big, that's a serious, that's a serious aircraft carrier. I mean, we've got the, the best aircraft carriers in the world, uh, but it, it, it's a weapon of war. It's a, it's a wonderful ship, the great people. However, it's a serious movement, and after what's happened in Syria, you, to move an aircraft carrier, now that's a signal to the world. Those two combinations are absolutely signaling the world that uh, uh, we, we're getting serious. Well, you know, as a military man yourself, uh, Colonel, I mean, you, you've spent uh, decades in the military, fought in many different wars or theaters. Um, don't you feel like America is, you know, strong again? Uh, we've got, okay, that's a political question, and you're my friend, but I, I do the military stuff. We, we've had... 16 years of war, we have the finest military on the planet, period. So from my no, standpoint, but, but, but here's almost... What... But, but... Go ahead, Colonel. Go ahead. No, you go. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, we have, we, we, because of the way, because we have been fighting for 16 years, it's a tremendous strain on an all-volunteer army. It's only less than 1% of the, of the country is actually fighting. However, normally we don't pay much attention at the soldier level to who's president. Normally the Pentagon does, people in D.C., but so I, I, that, I'm just saying from a military standpoint, 
The, we, we've got a great military. There's no President question. Stuff what I'm money, saying, but, yeah. Colonel, is we have a commander in chief who not only respects the military, but he's going to give them the funding that they need. The last commander in chief, or so called, wanted to reduce the army to pre World War II levels and wanted to get rid of submarines and, and again, sequestration, all that. I mean, now we've got someone who at least respects the military in the sense that he's going to give them the tools that they need. We're getting it. We're getting a, a serious upgrade that the Coast Guard definitely needs, and the Air Force and Navy. Right. And, and so yes, it, it's good okay. to get the extra money. Uh, but these guys, these guys are phenomenal, and they're still, again, 16 years okay. of war is a long time. Now let's get to the purpose of the segment. Now, why did the Russians not try to take down the cruise missile? Why didn't they? Yeah. Oh, for, for, because we we for, because we told them ahead of time that we're coming. Uh, and we we, may, we asked them, kind of said, look, don't do that, because if they if they had knocked down our cruise missiles and they they could have gotten some, then we're gonna we would have been forced to take down their air, anti aircraft capability, and now you're in a war, you're in an air war with Russia, so right. nobody so, wants to do that. There were actually Russian soldiers at the base that we blew up, and we didn't hit any of them. Right, right. So, you know, there was a recognition, there was a limitation, there was a reason in the president and the way he acted, you know, with a great deal of forethought, uh, although it was clearly, you know, intended to send a message, but also intended not to look like, you know, I'll fight with anybody. It's not out of control. It was strategic and specific. Yeah, if we shoot 59 cruise missiles, 1,000 pound warheads, go flying 500 feet off the ground. Uh, and to one air base, that's overwhelming force and a statement to Assad to, to never, don't ever do what you just did. Okay. When you move an aircraft carrier from Australia back to South Korea, now you're sending even a bigger message. Ah, well, we'll have to see on that one. Colonel David Hahn, thanks so much for being with us tonight. And Senator Rand Paul and former Trump campaign manager Corey Lewandowski are still on tap on this very busy news night. But next, we'll get deeper into the serious situation and also talk about our newest Supreme Court Justice, Neil Gorsuch. What a week for the Trump administration. I'll talk about it with the panel next. Don't go away. Live from America's news headquarters, I'm Robert Gray. The U.S. Navy says the aircraft carrier Carl Vinson is now heading to waters off the Korean Peninsula. The carrier had previously been scheduled for a port of call in Australia. The new order is coming after recent provocations by North Korea, which has recently launched a number of ballistic missiles into waters off Japan. In Sweden tonight, victims of a deadly attack in Stockholm are being honored. Candles and flowers were laid out at the scene where a truck crashed into a de department store, killing at least four people and injuring more than a dozen others. Meantime, in Oslo, Norway police have found what they describe as a bomb-like device. A large section of a main street has been cordoned off. A bomb squad is on the scene, and one person is in custody. I'm Robert Gray. Now back to the judge. Welcome back to Justice. Senator Rand Paul and his reaction to the Syria attacks are still to come. But now it's time for the panel. David Tafuri is a former State Department official. He was a foreign policy advisor during the 2008 presidential campaign to candidate Barack Obama. And here also is David Avella, Republican strategist and chairman of the political organization GOPAC. All right, guys, uh, let's talk about the fact that with this uh, uh, cruise missile uh, launch Thursday on Syria, uh, the, on the chemical weapons, uh, we've got, it seems, both the right and the left applauding. You've got Schumer and Pelosi and people who would never had a good thing to say. You've got McCain and Lindsey. Uh, what do you think, David, in terms of your perspective very quickly, the right thing to do? Well, you hit the nail on the head. The mainstream of the Republican Party and the Democratic Party both support this. This should have happened a long time ago. Assad has been acting with impunity for six plus years. This attack was very important. I have the view that it's going to change the dynamic in Syria. Assad now knows that he has to answer for his atrocities, for his crimes against humanity. The missile strikes were a measured response. They took out an airfield and some aircraft, the type of aircraft that were being used to do the chemical weapon strikes and to do other bombing strikes on the civilians 
in Syria. This is a real win for Trump, for the U.S., and for U.S. policy in the region. I fully support it. I've been writing since 2012 that okay. we should have d done it, and I'm really glad it happened. Well, and you should, you know what, if Barack Obama hadn't sat on his tail on this one, we wouldn't be looking at 500,000 dead and 5 million displaced. But David Avella, what do you say to people like Ann Coulter and Nigel Farage, who, you know, were part of that, uh, you know, nationalism, America first? You weren't going to get involved in these other wars. What do you think of their stance? Their views are equally relevant, but ultimately the president has to make the decision about.